Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to sensors and transducers and we will extend our discussion on level measurement. So, so far we have discussed uh, some level measurement techniques using pressure sensitive elements. In this video, we are going to discuss about another level measurement technique which will be using magnetostrictive transducer. Now we have discussed magnetostrictive transducer in detail but here we will uh, go through that again in a very quick manner. So magnetostrictive effect is or the magnetostriction is the property of magnetic materials particularly certain ferromagnetic materials which exhibit this property to a great extent is the phenomena in which uh, when they are subjected to an external uh, magnetic field in the process of magnetization, they uh, show a change in their shape or size, you know, length, breadth, all that, it undergoes change, okay. And this is called as magnetostrictive effect. Now, the magnetostrictive transducer is based on the reverse effect, which is called as Villari effect which is the opposite that is when a particular ferromagnetic material or magnetostrictive material is subjected to force or pressure its magnetic properties such as permeability susceptibility it undergoes change okay and uh, this property is called as or this effect is called as Villari effect and the magnetostrictive transducers, they are particularly based on this reverse effect, okay, Villari effect. So, uh, generally, the uh, magnetostrictive transducers, they have a solenoid or a toroid, okay, which basically is a ferromagnetic magnetostrictive material with a number of turns of wire wound over it and a current is passed through it, through a voltage source. Now, the uh, magnetic flux density due to any current carrying coil for the solenoid or toroid that is given by B is equal to mu0, mu r, n i. Mu0 is absolute permeability, mu r is relative permeability, n is the number of turns and i is the current flowing through it. Now, here absolute permeability is constant, number of turns of wire is constant current constant current is supplied so that is also constant so the magnetic flux density is dependent on the relative permeability which changes as per villari effect when subjected to external force or pressure okay that now magnetic flux is given by the dot product of the magnetic flux density and the area vector which is equal to B A cos theta where theta is the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field vector okay so how all these things are combined we'll see so the certain magnetostrictive materials which are used are particularly iron nickel cobalt which have very small magnetic moments and the relative permeability of the material it can either increase or decrease with applied mechanical stress depending upon the nature of the material. So the basic design it involves first a current carrying ferromagnetic coil which is which can either be in the form of a solenoid or toroid then electrodes the electrode wires to supply the current which are which connected to the voltage source and then we have the protective casing. So this is the basic design where we have either a solenoid or a toroid which is placed and we have a kind of a cylindrical arrangement which channelizes this uh, applied force or pressure on the solenoid or toroid. Okay, it channelizes the whole pressure downwards so that the maximum impact is achieved. Now, how this thing happens? First, Magnetic flux density as we all know it is dependent on relative permeability. Relative permeability changes with applied force or pressure it can either increase or decrease. When relative permeability changes magnetic flux density changes 
when magnetic flux density changes magnetic flux changes because area and angle between that is constant and when magnetic flux changes an emf is induced as per faraday's law there is also lenz law which comes into play which is the negative sign but here we are only concerned with the magnitude so this is the basic principle the emf which is induced and this induced emf is captured through the electrodes and then fed to certain uh, signal conditioning and processing circuitry to give us a particular uh, output which can be either in the form of a digital output most you know in most cases we have digital systems nowadays through proper analog to digital conversion techniques it is converted into a digital format and this is the expression of the emf which is generated okay san d sigma t by dt where s is the sensitivity of the sensor uh, sigma is the stress or pressure applied and a is the coil area and n is the number of turns now how we can use it for level measurement so here the basic principle is that we have a cylinder or a tank where we have liquid at a certain level so a float a uh, ball kind of a thing which is made of certain you know a material which can float on the surface it is connected to a rod and kind of a you know a rod which is uh, designed in such a way that when it moves up and down it strikes this impact point this impact point of the magnetostrictive sensor which is connected it, it it can either be connected on both ends or on one end okay so there can be one sensor or a series of or magnetic sensors for continuous level tracking in this case in this case whenever there is a change it can only detect level at one point when there is only one sensor placed when the level goes down it gives us an alert when it goes up it gives us an alert and it is particularly used in control systems uh, where there we have only one limiting point when uh, le let's say we have um, in any industrial systems whenever level goes beyond a certain danger, danger level we want to send an alert signal or when it goes below that certain one level we have to create an alert signal so that for purposes we can use this single sensor and when we need continuous tracking we want to know the level at each and every time instant then we can connect a series of magnetostrictive sensors so what happens when the level of the liquid goes up and down the float also goes up and down and this rod it strikes the magnetostrictive sensor at the impact point and when it strikes the impact point the permeability changes because of applied stress on the magnetostrictive material and that produces an induced emf okay that is the basic principle okay and in continuous tracking as the level goes continuously it goes down 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 it keeps on striking at different points impact points of the magnetostrictive sensors and it produces alert signal at those points and that's how we know the level so in this case uh, in continuous uh, measurements the sensors are generally placed at uh, fixed separation gaps okay y equals to let's say 0 meter y equals to 4 meter y equals to 8 meters like that okay and whenever a particular sensor is triggered it gives us information about the position or the liquid level uh, and there are certain mathematical calculations where the length of the float from that point to the liquid level that is subtracted from this and we get the level of the liquid okay so this is how uh, the level measurement using magnetostrictive sensor is done the basic principle is the use of magnetostrictive sensors and then we have a float and rod arrangement which gives us the impact on the magnetostrictive sensor okay so this is the thing so let us try to understand this whole thing from a three dimensional perspective so here we have the uh, use of magnetostrictive sensor for level measurement so we have 
the liquid inside the container along with the float and rod that arrangement so this whole thing it goes up and down like this and whenever it strikes the particular sensor it gets triggered and it gives us information about the level of the liquid in the container so it can be done in two ways first where we have a single sensor or a pair of sensors which are attached on both ends so when the liquid level it goes above or below this level and whenever it strikes uh, sorry i forgot this one okay whenever it goes above and below and strikes this uh, magnetostrictive sensor at the impact point it gets triggered and it gives us information about the level of the liquid the second arrangement is where we have a series of sensors placed now there can be you know 5 10 15 depending upon the height of the uh, container and the amount of liquid that can be filled in that so here when uh, this whole thing it goes up and down it the various sensors connected at various points they get triggered okay they get triggered and as i said they are connected at fixed separation gaps from each other so whenever this whole thing it uh, the level of the liquid it goes above and below a certain level the float which moves along with it it also goes and strikes the impact point at various points and it gives us information about the level of the liquid okay so this is the whole mechanism operating principle of level measurement using magnetostrictive sensors okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much